In 2017, one artist asked, what's the second worst thing I could do on 9-11? And uploaded a fan art so utterly tone deaf, it briefly caused Americans to put their politics aside and unite against the one true enemy. Tumblr. You may have heard of Sonichu. You may have even heard of Lashana Ball. But have you heard of black trans furry weeaboo drug dealer Thomas Jefferson? So why does this exist? Why do people make fan art of pregnant Joe Biden? And is there truly such a thing as a kawaii war crime? This is a story of darkness, dank memes, and Obama with pronouns. This is the story of the Thomas Jefferson Miku binder. Today's bad art history, politics, pronouns, and presidential yaoi. It all went down on September 11th of 2017. Deep from the bowels of Tumblr erupted a magnificently stinky work of art, a digital illustration of an alternate universe Thomas Jefferson as a bisexual, recovering cocaine addict, furry, weeaboo college student. The artist took care to highlight the founding father's inability to get it up and his love of K-pop. He's depicted with a vibrant head of purple hair and one deeply controversial article of clothing, a chest binder with Miku on it. Now, if you don't know what a chest binder or a Miku is, or if anything I said in the last 30 seconds gave you stroke-like symptoms, you are not alone. Because the very day this image dropped, hundreds of bewildered onlookers were forced to ask, this was some kind of 600 IQ satire, right? Surely no one would draw a picture of Benjamin Netanyahu in a binder and tennis skirt and mean it. Was this intended to be mildly racist at best and weirdly sexual at worst? And why, why, Thomas Jefferson? The answer is long, hard, and really fucking weird. But to get to the actual sticky truth, we gotta go way back to the dank meme era. Twenty fifteen, Lynn Manuel Miranda. Early that year, Hamilton, an American musical, premiered off Broadway to near instant success. This rap-infused modern retelling of the founding of America received massive praise from critics and viewers alike. And notably, it cast non-white actors to play white historical figures, which Tumblr users categorically approved. And in no time at all, a dedicated fandom emerged on the website, with artists, writers, and fans alike throwing their creations into the ring. So far, so normal until it wasn't. September 9th, 2017. Tumblr artist Umbroni Draws posts the first of four illustrations based on the Hamilton cast. Some Tumblr users voice their discomfort with Umbroni's excruciatingly detailed accounts of the characters based on the actual founding fathers, gay situationships, and drug use. But life went on. Two days later, on September 11th, a second fan art hits the blog. Though his first piece mostly flew under the radar, something about this one radicalized the Tumblr flesh wall. And within hours, it had closed it around him, hurling accusations of homophobia, anti-blackness, transphobia, woobification, and most concerningly of all, romanticizing slavery. More on all of that in a minute. Meanwhile, Tumblr users were on the attack. As one of them wrote, this picture dead ass made me want to die. It made me feel sick. I'm not joking. I hate Thomas Jefferson, but not even he deserves this. What the fuck was going through your head when you thought it would be a good idea to make a historical figure gender fluid? Alexander Hamilton was cis. And keep the cis thing in mind, because this was about to become a life-ruining issue for our protagonist. September 12th, the molding had gotten so intense that Umbroni was forced to post an official response to the backlash, explaining, as many of you know, my recent character sheet got a bunch of hate on Tumblr. I got accused of homosexual erasure. It's my blood, sweat, tears, and hard work. I will continue to post. Heart emoji. And they didn't like that at all. But unbeknownst to Umbroni, it was far too late for apologies. It was Reddit time. Over the next two weeks, the Miku Binder image was reposted ad nauseum on dozens of subreddits, Twitter, Instagram, and anywhere people went to get their fix of cringe. And the longer people went without an explanation, the more contagiously this drawing spread, ultimately attaining meme status as the prime example of Tumblr art gone wrong. And even though the artist mostly went uncredited, between the boiling hate on Tumblr and relentless mockery on every other platform, Ombroni was beginning to crack. And on September 24th, he quietly abandoned his blog for good. So let's breathe for a second. What was the big deal? How was this so much more offensive than, say, this? As with many things of this nature, it all started in the current year. 
2017 was truly a time to be alive. We were one year out from a hugely divisive election. I'm gonna come. And online slap fight politics were reaching epidemic proportions. In one corner, you had OG iDubs and the Reddit of old. And in the other, you had the terrifying enigma of Tumblr.com. And we'll come back to Tumblr in detail. But all you need to know right now is that by the mid 2010s, Tumblr was best known for two things, jork in it and identity politics. And that brings us to the Miku Binder. One, if you don't know, Hatsune Miku is a mascot character for the Vocaloid singing synthesizer software. Basically, a digital musical artist that you can make sing whatever you want. Since 2007, she's maintained a massive cult of popularity and inspired thousands of fan art creations. Two, the binder. A chest binder is a garment designed to flatten the chest and give a more masculine appearance. And the whole point, typically, is to look as though you're not wearing one. So by putting a design on it and making it a fashion statement, Umbroni incurred the offense of the one demographic you did not want to fuck with during the dank meme era, the dreaded SJW. Though we as a culture have moved on from calling people social justice warriors, the term generally meant that you were given to political hysteria, usually of the left-leaning variety. Or as Urban Dictionary so bluntly puts it, a white girl who complains on Twitter. But name-calling aside, this was a label you did not want. And no place online had a stronger social justice tendency, for better or for worse, than Tumblr. Where the excesses of the online right were best shown by the use of one very bad word on 4chan, like constantly. The excesses of the online left thrived on Tumblr, where users would regularly engage in blood sports over who was more Christ-like in their politics. And in 2017, being mad at the internet was social currency. And there is a third thing you absolutely have to remember. This was fan art of a Broadway actor playing a fictional version of a dude who's been dead for 198 years. This is roughly 50 billion degrees of separation. And amazingly, this wasn't even the tip of the uwu iceberg. Because it would turn out that people have been making cutesy fan art of US presidents for a while now. And you may be thinking, well, yeah, it's Tumblr. And on this one, dear viewer, you are dead wrong. <laughs> So on the list of deadly infractions committed by Umbroni, racism, unflattering trans representation, etc., is a crime known as woobification. Woobification in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing, as all it means is taking a morally gray character and giving them some endearing traits. The baby girl treatment, if you will. But by no means did Tumblr invent this. In fact, back in the 70s, Star Trek famously had one of the earliest prototypes of a modern uwu fandom, with women falling over themselves to cutesify spies and write their own characters into the plot. The concept of a Mary Sue, a flawless self-insert character that everyone in the story wants to boink, actually came from satirical Star Trek fanfic created in 1973 by a fan who was fed up with the epidemic of poorly written Trekkie stories. And on a more relevant note, from sleepovers to anime George Washington to the legendary Sonic Obama crossover, we've been woobifying and making US presidents kawaii since the dawn of time. There's something about turning a political figure into a mascot that hits the sweet spot between shitpost and fanfiction. Who doesn't love a good anime Obama or three-part reptilian Trump X-reader fanfic? Or how about this very normal picture of Dwight D. Eisenhower sitting on a bench? Now, with all that said, let's address the slavery-shaped elephant in the room. Thomas Jefferson, the actual guy, was a slave owner. Shocking behavior for a land-owning man in the 1700s, I know. But Tumblr does not forgive nor forget. And even though Hamilton, a work of fiction, was massively popular and fan interpretations often avoided touching on such historical atrocities, it did kind of come up. And to put it bluntly, taking a white guy who owns slaves and turning him into a cutesy black guy wearing a God is a black woman t-shirt would strike a raw nerve on any side of the political aisle. For Tumblr users, this was simply one infraction too many and only added to the massive list of reputational blows the website had been suffering since 2013. Though Tumblr was launched back in 2007, it didn't see widespread use till around 2012. And shortly thereafter, it exploded in popularity 
popularity among the art, fandom, and social justice space. Yet to outsiders, it developed a reputation for political hysteria and one very recognizable divisive art style whose echoes can still be felt in modern animation. But 2013 signaled the beginning of the end. Tumblr had finally hit peak popularity and controversy, only to be acquired by Verizon for $1 billion and eventually lose over half its user base due to sweeping changes on the site. And by 2017, it became a bit of an echo chamber, used primarily for fandom discussion and porn. Lots and lots and lots of porn. So much, in fact, that a 2016 study revealed that a fifth of its 23 million active users were being unintentionally exposed to porn every time they logged on. And as if this wasn't bad enough, in 2018, a site-wide porn ban enraged the Coomers so much that Tumblr as a website was effectively destroyed. And to be frank, the Miku binder does come off as a little bit porn-brained. But in Umbroni's defense, is it weird, objectively, to take Thomas Jefferson and put him in a queer polycule and give him all of these seemingly random traits as opposed to just making up your own character? Yeah, a little bit. But this completely fictional fan art truly didn't hurt anybody, other than being a mildly uncomfortable and tone-deaf viewing experience for some online. And the story could probably end right here, were it not for one little-known cop-related protest in the summer of 2020. So to go all the way back to the beginning to our Miku Binder, let's have a quick refresh. September 11th, the Miku Binder is uploaded. September 12th, it explodes onto the internet. And September 24th, Umbroni quietly abandons the offending blog after endless harassment. But this didn't spell the end of his online experience. And after the initial controversy with the fan art blew over, in spite of its persistence as a meme to this day, Umbroni remained online with opinions at the ready. The true end to Umbroni's online career actually came in June of 2020, when he expressed a pro-police sentiment on Twitter, leading to renewed mockery of his original artwork and the cancellation ever. But between the fan art and the spicy opinions and the vandalism of Aaron Burr's Wikipedia page to suggest that he had given Thomas Jefferson his first Miku binder, Umbroni's reputation and mental health were utterly destroyed. And as one of his Tumblr mutuals wrote on his behalf, congratulations, you harassed another queer artist of color to the point of considering side. Both people outside of the fandom and people within the fandom have been guilty of this. How many more times is this going to keep happening? And if Ambroni is still out there on the internet under a new name, nobody has been able to find him. Arguably, for the better. But the legacy lives on. Umbroni left behind an extensive gallery of Hamilton fan art and was clearly a true devotee to the fandom. And through his unintentional creation of this meme came tons and tons of fan art that still gets made every election cycle. From Bernie Sanders to Ben Shapiro to Ted Kaczynski, few could resist the temptation to take their favorite politics guy and give him pronouns and a binder. And with any luck, in the coming election, we're about to see a ton more. And we're not talking metric tons, because this is America, baby. This has been Bad Art History. Thank you so much to the patrons for making this possible. My sincerest appreciation to Scum Brotherhood, Green Goat, Beelzebub, Kale, Matt Voltron, Rotten Pie, and Scoo. And to scum babies, Acadia, Alice, Alexander First, Angel Perez Calzada, Apoptosis Necrosis, Baker, Cootie Patootie, Corneas Corn, Fadfoff, Hudson, Insane Freak, Jake McGuckin, Jasper, Joshua DA, Joshua Botch, Kipper, Kraken Jones, Kyle, Literally Dead Inside, Max Ray, Matt, Raguez, Raymundo2112, Sheeb, Sloth in 3D, Splendid Calhoof, Sabaton, Tommy V, Tyler H, Unclear Rain, and Very Tired Boy. And my sincerest thanks to anyone who has pitched in in any capacity to make this happen. Thank you so much. I literally love you and I'll see you soon.